Hello everyone, a very good morning. Today we are going to discuss a role of MRI in endometrioma and, and as a radiologist what we should know. A 35 year old female presented with complaints of recurrent lower abdominal pain. We are having three axial MR images that is a T2 weighted image, a T1 weighted image and T1 weighted fat set image. So what we are seeing in the pelvis is a well defined cystic lesion which is slightly hyper intense to adjacent musculature and you can see few follicles in the right adnexa indicating the presence of lesion is within the right ovary and if you see it's not uniformly slightly hyper intense it's having some shading this is called a shading phenomena and coming to axial t1 weighted image you can see it's not Hypo intense, it's completely hyper intense. You can see it's brighter than the adjacent fat. And coming to T1 fat site image, you can see the abdominal fat is suppressed, everything the peritoneal fat or mental fat is suppressed, and the lesion still looks bright, indicating that it contains a blood product. So, based on the T2 and T1 fat site image and T1 weighted characteristic, so this is a classic case of endometrioma. So there are few imaging pulse which we need to know about endometrioma and all pelvis MR imaging protocols should include T1 weighted fat sac sequence because most of the patients with female patients present with uh, vague pelvic pain. So even small endometriotic implants can be missed if, you, if we do not include the T1 weighted fat sac sequences. The second point is the low signal intensity of adnexal masses on still is not specific for teratoma and it cannot, it does not exclude endometrioma. Kindly remember this point. On still, if it is a low signal and it is not specific for mature cystic teratoma always and it never excludes endometrioma. So we should be careful in looking at the other sequences. And benign endometriomas can show restricted diffusion. And one of the cause or increased risk for endometriosis is the obstruction of anti-grade menstrual flow. Desjualized endometriosis can mimic ovarian malignancy in pregnant women. So once during pregnancy, if there is an endometrioma, it will be, we, we may face difficulty in diagnosing endometrioma because it can be desjualized. So we should be careful. It can mimic a malignancy. Endometriomas can transform into clear cell or endometrial epithelial ovarian carcinomas. And this is a very rare transformation. And solid invasive endometriosis of the posterior uterus can make posterior segmental adenomyosis. So we should be careful in delineating the location of the endometriotic implant, whether it is within the uterus or posterior to the uterus. So these are the few imaging points which are very much essential in diagnosing endometrium and we should keep in mind. And for further reading, I suggest you to go through this MR imaging of endometriosis at an imaging pulse published in RSNA in the year 2012. Kindly go through this. It's an excellent article given on endometriosis. Thank you very much.